What's going on guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're having a look at a do all progress bar, which is basically just one value. However, we use two bar to create a nice little transition effect. So let's have a look at it, right? If we press on two, we're going to gain HP. And as you can see, this is what happens when you gain. Now, if you lose some, it goes on the red side. If you lose even more, red side until we're done. And then back up. And you can cancel it in the middle of the transition, it's going to pick up exactly where it left off. All the transitions are always one second. So if you cancel this one right there, it's going to take a little bit longer to complete. So they're going to be a little bit slower. So that is the desired effect. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. Let's get right into it. Okay, so before we get started, I'd like to remind everybody that this is downloadable directly from the website. So you can head over to the website second link in the description down below and download this whole package it includes this small ui and it also includes the code so let's have a look at my current setup i have a normal canvas inside of it i have a container object which is basically um, just a frame with a mask this frame contains my hit point background which looks something like that so it's a little bit skewed on the edge as you can see over here and then i have a mask on top of it so uh, my mask basically allows me to cut the face of my uh, my character over here, as you can see. Then what's important for us is, of course, the bar down here, the progress bar we're going to be using. Now, inside of that one, there is two bars. First one is on the top level. So the one we see right now, the black one, this is just a background color, basically. And beneath it, I have a desired progress, which is denoted by this color, and then a progress, which is denoted by that color. The only important thing with this is that my anchor for both of these bar is on the left hand side, which allows me to scale on the X axis. And as you can see, it fills the whole thing and even further than that, if you want, um, which we won't do by code, but basically all I'm doing when I'm playing around with this is I'm modifying the scale. So if I want my HP to be on zero scale is equal to zero. If I want it to be full is equal to one. And also do note that the, the bar, the whole width of this is the width of the parent. So 350 in this case. Okay, so that's my setup. I also have a script on top of it called progress bar in which we'll be going into today. So we just had two very short episodes with very small code. Um, in this one, we do have a lot more code, but we'll, we'll keep it as short, basically. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that let's go fast. So we're gonna start right away with two reference, the reference for the progress bar and the desired progress bar. Those are the two images I showed you earlier. Make sure you include unityengine.ui because we're using images and that's part of their namespace over here. So those are just reference, we drag and drop that. Um, next up we have colors. So what color are we gonna be using for, not regular, that we can set in the inspector, but when we gain, um, we need to have a color and when we lose, we wanna have a second color because we're only using one bar to create that slow um, effect. So slow effect going towards your real progress basically. So I'm changing the color of a bar, therefore I need those two color. I'm gonna put them default on green and then lose on red. Um, I think it's pretty much common sense, but of course in the preview, I don't use these. And finally, my last set of field is under logic. Um, I have a series level one over here called max progress. And this is basically what is going to be your max HP or your max mana or your max energy. This is just the maximum amount of whatever you have in this case. So we're going to go simple, put it on a hundred. Okay. And the rest are just logic field to help us navigate and also update our hit point bar. So when we call these object, when we call these progress bar, we're going to do so using a public field, sorry, a public function. I call it set progress. So if you have a different HP, you go from 50 HP to 60 HP, you're going to say set progress 60. And then you have another field called duration. And that's how long it's going to take for your HP to be updated towards this. And right next to it, you have a float duration. And that's how long are we going to play that very small animation. Um, technically code wise, you're already say up to 60 HP already but you can have a little duration float in there, say one second, two second, whatever you want to have your hit point bar slowly go towards that value, creating a nice feeling of anticipation. Okay, that being said, we're gonna start by stopping all the coroutine. It sounds weird because we don't have any coroutine right now, but we're gonna be updating this with a coroutine. So right away, if we're like changing HP, 
um, very fast, like twice in less than a second, then I want to be able to stop the last um, small animation and start from where we are right now. So basically, this is not relevant right now, but when we start a coroutine, it's going to come and be relevant. Um, second step is we're going to be changing the color of the desired progress. Desired progress is your second bar, is your background bar, um, not the black one, but the one in between. And that one is going to be taking the green color if we're gaining HP, and it's going to take the red color if we're losing some. Great. Now, at the same time, during this set progress, I also check whether or not we're gaining or we're losing um, right over here, which is going to be useful in the future because we're going to be deciding which bar we update and which one is in the front, um, that kind of deal. So we're, we'll need that value very shortly in the future. Actually, we'll need that value right now on the next line. And that is because if we are gaining value, if we are gaining hit point, we'll want to be using the desired progress bar, the one in between to actually go all the way, say, towards the right if we're going full HP. And if that's not the case, then we'll want to be using the real hit point bar to go all the way down to zero if we need to. And that's just because of the ordering. That's just because of the ordering. And you'll see what it does in the game. You'll see how it looks like. Now, do know that this set of code over here is not our update. It's not our smooth update. It's not our animation. It's something we set right away on the first frame as, as we decide to do a set progress. So. Um, going back to it, if we're setting a progress to something that's higher than what we currently have, we're just going to scroll the desired bar where it should be, and that's going to be where our HP will be, you know, when, when it's full or when it's a little bit higher than before. Um, we'll just see it in the game, basically. And I use a nice little helper function I made called get progress ratio using my current progress and also the maximum progress, because we're going to need a number that's between in zero and one. And to get that, we simply do a division. We say, okay, well, let's take our current progress right now and our maximum, so hit point, and say divided by max hit point. If we're at 50 hit point, we divide it by 100, we get 0 0.5, that's half a bar. So the get progress ratio is a fairly simple one. In fact, you know what? I don't like having additional function like that. I actually don't think it's that clean. So here's what we'll do. We'll just do it straight up over here. Why not? We don't need to have an additional function for that my mistake i just wanted to be fancy a little bit but we definitely don't need that there we go so progress divided by max progress will give us what we want let's get rid of that function all right so with this code right here we should be able to see some progress in the game um if we were to test it out right away and that's what i'd like to do right now so i'm gonna go at the top paste in a private void update which is just gonna be for testing guys it's just for testing purpose you don't need to leave that in here but for testing purpose i'll say Hey, um, if I press on one on my on my keyboards, the one above QWE, alpha one, let's set my progress to 50 hit point. It's gonna take one second to update, that's totally fine. Um, if I press on two, let's put it on 100. If I press on three, let's empty my whole HP bar. So I'll have a look at this. So I'm gonna need reference. If we just wait a little bit, it's gonna compile. We're gonna have to drag and drop our desired progress in here and then progress there. And then let's hit play. Well, it doesn't seem to work, so we're never really modifying the real progress bar. We're always defining the um, desired progress, and that's probably because we never get a different gaining value because current progress is actually never set. So we're gonna have to move a little bit further with our code to have it work. But as you could see, when we go to the max, it does fill the whole thing. And if we were to, um, say, add more maximum HP, so 120, it would go a little bit before that because we're setting the progress on 100 and not say 120 in this case. And we have that working, so that's fairly cool. Now let's go and complete our coroutine and our little animation so um, everything works. Let's start down here by saying, hey, our previous ratio is gonna be equal to the current ratio we have right now. They're not set right now, they will be set in the coroutine just in a moment. Um, let's do the same thing with current progress. And our progress is going to be equal to a let's clamp this in between well first let's use a value and clamp it in between zero and our maximum hit point so max progress and now from that point on we'd probably have our bar working so we'd probably have some switching going in between the normal bar and the desired bar 
But yeah, as you can tell over here, this is 100 HP, that's zero HP, and that's 50% over here. So we do have what we want over here, and we also um, see them switching depending in which uh, order we trigger them. So that's fairly cool, that's what we wanted. Now it's time to actually create our small animation. And we'll do it, as I said, in a coroutine. So let's start a coroutine, and we'll call it Upgrade Progress Bar with the duration in this case. So how long is it going to take to complete our animation? Now do know that it could be interrupted at any time because when we do call set progress, um, we stop all the coroutine and we're gonna start from our current ratio. Okay, having that said, I'm gonna go ahead and start writing down this one. This is a I enumerator because we're using a coroutine. Make sure you include system.collection. So this field at the top this namespace, sorry. Update progress bar is exactly what it's supposed to be called. So everything is fine in here. The only problem we have is that we don't do a yield return just yet. And also this function doesn't exist anymore. Instead, we're gonna be using current progress divided by maximum progress. So if you haven't noticed yet, I'm using a total of four value. Those are defined by either ratios or progress. Progress, we could say it's hit HP. So hit point would be progress. And desired progress would be, hey, that's that will be my HP in, say, one second. So HP in, that will be my HP. Now, the next two is ratio. Start ratio and desired ratio. So right now, my ratio is, say, 0 0.5. And while I'm done updating my HP, it's going to be, say, 0 0.8. And it's always going to be a number in between 0 and 1 because we want a ratio of the scaling of the bar. So what I'm doing here is I'm assigning that to what we currently had, to previous ratio. So that's the one that's currently active on the bar right now. And um, desired ratio is gonna be where we're supposed to go once our HP is full. With those two value, we're able to create vectors because we need to set scaling vectors. The you know, scale in Unity, they don't work on a single axis, they work on three axis. And of course, we'll need a vector for that. So I just create them right here. The only thing I replace, of course, is the... And then down here, we fall into the meat of our coroutine. So we're going to be iterating over the duration. So here's what we do. We declare a float. This is a float. Make sure it's not an int. And as long as this float is smaller than duration, we keep on adding time to delta time. And then what we do is we take that float, we take the duration, and we turn it into a ratio. So another ratio that is not um, our hit point bar ratio, but that's another ratio of where are we during this transition. So how far in are we? If it's a 10 second transition and we have we are at the five second mark, then that's a 0 0.5 right here. So with this, with the starting vector of where we should be, where we need to go and how far in the transition we are, we can just create a lerp. So we can say, hey, take my progress bar, you know the transform the local scale? Yeah, do a lerp in between where we are right now, where we should be and how far in the transition we are. And with that lerp, we'll be able to get that nice transition over time. Now, um, this is not it though, because we do move this progress bar. Sometimes we move the other one. It depends on whether or not we're gaining HP or we're losing HP. Sometimes we move the one that's in front. Sometimes we move the one that's in the back. So we're going to have to encapsulate this in between a if statement, and then also have a else statement in which we do the same exact thing, but with the other bars, with the desired progress bar, but the code stays the exact same. And now we're going to add one edge case in case we're actually changing really fast in between um, set progress bars. So in case we're changing hit point really fast, then we might be interrupted in the middle. And if that's the case, well, we need to start our new animation where we left off and not where we were supposed to be left off. So um, with that in, in mind, every frame, we also set our new current ratio by where we are right now. And then finally, to satisfy our coroutine, we do a yield return null, so nothing is run. Um, well, nothing is run beyond that point. When everything is done, when the whole for loop is done, and we waited long enough, we have our old transition, then we're going to go ahead and say, hey, let's manually set those in case there's a small epilepson, ellipson, epilepson number? I don't know, but in case there's a small remaining of that float, let's go ahead and set it directly right here. And that was our code. That was our very big, annoying code. I'm going to wrap everything up. Let's see how many lines we got. We got about 80 lines for all this logic, but the result is actually quite worth it. It's not much. You guys might think it's really not much. You could have a static hit point bar, but having that small animation gives it such 
additional charm. <laughs> Let's have a look. So this is it. When I press on two, I go full. When I press on three, I go to zero. Let's go full and then down to 50%. We end up with something like this. That's actually quite cool. Now, of course, you want to be changing the values to something else. Say my gain, I want my gain to be just like the color we have right now, but a little bit, say lighter, we could do lighter. And my loss, take the same exact color, but this one would be darker. That's actually quite cool. I like that as well. So guys, this is actually how we did our hit point bar. It's, uh, well, I call it hit point bar, but you know, we wrote it in such a way that it's called progress. So it could be anything really. It could be progress towards destroying a town or progress towards completing an objective, progress towards um, your fuel, that kind of stuff. Everything would work in this case. And that's actually where we're gonna be ending today's episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, um, you can find it directly on the website, but make sure you hit the like button before that and also subscribe because you'll need to be subscribed to download this hit point bar. You'll need 100 XP and that you can find just by subscribing and logging on the website. So thank you so much for watching. Once again, I'll see you tomorrow and uh, you have a good day. Cheers.